Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about a technique I'm going to share with you that I do quite often actually, multiple times a day, a lot actually, now that I'm thinking about it, that I think will be of great benefit to you, especially the more you practice like anything, the better you will get at it. So as someone who is watching this video, you're probably spiritually awake, you're aware, you're conscious, you have had your awakening and understand that everything is energy, there's a greater force out there, some call it God or, you know, um, a specific figure, right? It's all that is. But in reality, again, everything is energy. So including your thoughts, your words, your actions, your thoughts literally become things. Everything in our world that we've created came from first in the mind, right? The car you drive, the chair, uh, the little inventions that keep popping up you see on like Amazon Home and things like that. Um, funny example, because I'm like starting to look for stuff for my uh, apartment. But anyways, it's true. Everything that is created was first created in the mind, right? It just didn't pop out magically. Someone thought about it. So knowing that your thoughts become things, how important is it to be aware not only of your thoughts, but about your state of being because what you think has an influence on your energy and your energy influences or is your state of being how you move about in the world. And if thoughts become things and everything is energy, how important is it to be aware of the state of being you're in and the thoughts, the behaviors, the words, the actions that are associated with that particular state of being that are coherent with your thoughts. Very important. So how aware are you? Are you super aware of what you're thinking all the time? Uh, are you, do you take time to sit with yourself and maybe meditate or just write out things and become aware of how you're approaching things? What is your state of being? We all know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know when you're around someone and they're having negative thoughts all the time, their energy is super heavy. They may be experiencing uh, depression or you might be experiencing depression and it's all because of your thoughts. Your thoughts are influencing your state of being. So what I mean by that is someone who is depressed, do you think they're having really positive, optimistic thoughts about life and really ambitious and looking forward to things? No. They're not. Their state of being is very low energy. It's very heavy, maybe even hopeless or apathetic. And it's because of their thinking. It's the what they're thinking about their current situation that's creating this heavy energy. So it's incredibly important. And the technique we're going to talk about today is something, like I said, that I use often in many different situations in order to really shift my energy, shift my vibration, shift, therefore, shift my reality. And it's by first shifting the way that I'm thinking. And I'll take you through an example. We'll do it together towards the end of the video. So how aware are you of your thoughts, of your state of being? When you walk into work, are you thinking about things or are you someone who's always in your head constantly thinking about what you gotta do later, what's next, this problem, and I gotta handle that, and what's going on here, and oh, I got this vacation coming up, or last week I'm still upset with that uh, coworker I had an argument with, or Pat, you know what I mean? In other words, are you present? Are you here right now watching the video, or even as I speak, do you have this on in the background and you're someone else? There's nothing wrong with it, of course. Again, I'm just here to shed light and asking you a question to become aware of your own awareness, your own level of presence, your own level of being. Are you disassociated or are you here with me right now, here with yourself right now? So do you go into work with a crappy attitude? You might hate your job. Do you go in there and go, oh God, I gotta go in here again today. I gotta do this, I gotta, oh man. Or what about if you're a student, or even if you're not a student, but you're taking a big test? Are you present and confident in the material? Or are you going, oh my God, I hope I pass. Maybe I pass, like maybe I won't. Oh my God, what's gonna happen? You're going really nervous. Or are you going on a first date? Are you going in relaxed and confident being like, yeah, you know, we'll go and we'll see, get to know this person, hang out, maybe we'll click, maybe we won't. Or you, you're gonna go in there and go, oh my God, she's so hot, what am I gonna do? I can't handle myself, oh my God. Or, oh, this guy's amazing, oh my gosh, she's so great. Oh my God. So 
what is most beneficial to you? How do you approach things? These are your thoughts. These are your states of being as you go into these different situations. So those are examples of how your thoughts affect your state of being and how your state of being prepares you or doesn't prepare you for the situations that you go into. The technique we're gonna do and talk about today is a something that I do tangibly all the time in order to get myself in the right state. Does it work always? No. Do I do it all the time? No, but I'm pretty darn good at it now and I do it quite often. It's like an automatic process pretty much now at this point. So our thoughts create our reality and influence our words, our actions, our behavior, again, aka our state of being. So spend time, What the technique I'm going to talk about is spending time getting into the right frame of mind. As you spend time before you do anything, especially if it's difficult or especially if you're having doubts, when you spend time to prepare yourself mentally and get yourself in a positive, confident state, how much better is every situation that you walk into? So again, are you going to go into this test? You have to think, oh my God, oh crap, uh, and then you go in there and you're still in your head and you're freaking out and you get all the wrong answers, you're like, oh man. Or are you gonna go in there and take a second and be like, okay, I've done the best I could and I studied as much as I could. I still honestly don't feel that prepared, but you know what, at this point, as my old football coach used to say, the hay is in the barn. So I've prepared, I've done my best, I'm just gonna do my best to relax, go in, be present, and live with the outcome. If I didn't do as good, it means I didn't prepare as much as I needed to and I'll learn the lesson and move forward. Or, you know what I mean? You see how different that approach is? Like, oh my God, oh, I gotta try to remember this. Oh, cram, oh God, I'm stressing out. And then you go and then you're stressing out and then you go in there and you sit down on the test and you blank out. See what I mean? So, the technique I'm talking about, spending time, even if it's only 30 seconds by yourself or with someone or whatever, even if there's people in the car around you, take a second to tune in mentally, go in internally, get into your own mind, become aware of your thoughts and think, Okay, what am I, why am I so nervous right now? Or what are my thoughts about? Well, I'm afraid I'm gonna fail this test. Okay, if I fail this test, I fail this test. Sure, there might be consequences, but I have no one else to blame but me. I just means I just have to prepare better next time. It's not gonna be the end of the world. However, I have done a good job in preparation. I'm gonna do my best, and I'm gonna go in here focused, relaxed, and confident, knowing that the outcome will be what it is. And my intention is, and I feel that I'm gonna do well, but it's not gonna be the end of world, the end of the world if I don't. And so, okay, get myself into a relaxed state. Now the question for you is, how much better is your approach to that test once you take a second to go internally and ground yourself, get yourself in the right mindset, get yourself in the right energy, the right frame, the right state of being in order to be effective, right? Same thing, or as a, you know, I wrote down a bunch of examples. Imagine a job interview. You need to go, oh my God, I really want this job. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. I don't get it. What if they don't like me? What if they don't know? Blah, 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 blah. And you're freaking out. Or you say, this is a great opportunity and I really would love to work here. At least it seems like that. I know that there's, that's a highly competitive position. I expect that. However, I know that I'm worthy and I'm capable of doing this job at a high level. If I don't get it, it's not gonna be the end of the world. But I'm gonna go in here and be relaxed and calm and genuine and authentic. And if I'm the right fit, as you know as an awakened one, the universe will deliver. And if it doesn't, it means the universe has something better for me in store. And this is simply something that I need to learn a lesson from. So I'm gonna go in here and relax and do my best so it'll be what it is. How much better, how much more calm and relaxed are you gonna go into that interview? What's that gonna convey to your hiring manager, your future employer? Be like, dang, that's crazy. Like, there's a lot of people in here, but they've all come in super nervous. This person's like super relaxed and I'm getting to know them. They're super chill and they have the skills. You think that's gonna stand out amongst everyone else that's going to the job interview super nervous? You're dang right it is. So again, what is the value and the practice that we're talking about, the technique, to spend some time getting yourself right mentally, but it's really about getting yourself right energetically. Getting, sure, oh, okay, I, I think I'm confident, I'm confident, yeah, I'm gonna do great at this, oh, it's gonna be okay. Uh, okay, your thoughts are there, cool, but are you in that right state of energy? No. Use your thoughts by tuning into yourself to tune in your thoughts and get yourself in the right state of energy, the right state of being, the right frame that will be most beneficial to the specific situation. So beneficial to do this. Again, what is the value of that? 
You ever interviewed someone or been around someone that's nervous? No one's ever comfortable. You know why? Because they're freak. Unless, well, I shouldn't say that because like I am because I see it and I'm just like, well, that's them. I'm me, but like I'm not going to be nervous and allow my energy field to be affected because they're freaking out and they're on their own thing. I'm present, but like I'm not going to absorb that, right? And that's about empath and energy work. And we'll talk about some of that stuff too. I have a feeling that once I move, you know, things are going to get a little more spiritual. You'll you'll see, but um, we'll talk about those things. But anyways, the point is, get yourself in the right frame, the right energy, the right state of being to better best serve you. So how do we do this? We spend time getting into the right frame of mind by positive self-talk. Sounds cheesy, but it's true. Because again, what's more beneficial to you? Oh my God, this girl's way out of my league. I'm going on a date. Oh frick, I feel, oh my gosh. Oh gosh, she's not even going to like me, dude. Why am I even here? Oh my God, I'm going to screw it up. Like whatever, right? Or, hey, she's she's fine. She's cool as hell. She seems chill. I actually think I'm going to like this girl, but I'm not going to get too carried away. I don't know her yet. I'm just going to go in here and chill. We're going to have a good time, get to know her. And if we click, we click. If we don't, we don't. We'll see what's up. How much better is that? right? So positive self-talk, dispelling negativity. Again, this comes to self-awareness and being aware of your own thoughts because when you're aware of your own thoughts, you can dispel the negativity. What are the negative beliefs you have about going on this date? I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. She's out of my league. I can't handle this. I don't know what to say. All this stuff. Be like, well, look, man, there might be times where like, I don't know what to say, whatever. Like, I'm just here to get to know this person. I'm just going to be me. Like, it is what it is. What's the worst case scenario? I flop, I have an embarrassing moment, I make a fool of myself, and I never speak to this girl again. And life goes on. Do you know what I mean? So, you got to, same thing, like job interview. Oh my God, oh, I really want this job, I really want this job, but, oh crap, oh, if I don't get it, it's the end of the world, I'm gonna die, oh. Or, okay, what's the worst case scenario? Yes, I do need this job. Yes, I really wanna work here, this is a great opportunity. But again, I trust in the universe and myself, to deliver and if this job doesn't pan out i know ju- a one just as good or a better opportunity is going to come along and it's going to be the right fit i let go i trust it's all good so you walk yourself you dispel your negativity by getting in the right frame of mind and walking yourself through these scenarios this will shift your energy spend time walking through, through the scenarios you can even visualize the more you can use your tactile senses the five senses that we all have taste touch smell hear and see and you can visualize powerfully, it will help you shift into an emotional state that's the right frame of mind, right? Imagine yourself in that scenario, visualize. This is what athletes do. What do they do before games? You've heard some of the interviews with the most famous athletes. I saw myself winning that game winning shot with three seconds left before I even did it. I already knew I was gonna make it. We were in timeout, coach was writing up that play. I already knew that I already knew the bucket was good in my mind. I knew it, I already saw the play visualize so powerful to visualize helps you shift your vibration into that state already being where you are and when you're there and you're there energetically and in a vibratory match to it and then you go into the situation in the present well you're being drawn that energy everything around you is co-creating so you can be in that final energy that's how it works that's what we're doing so shift your energy become mindful of your thoughts and use it to shift your state of being. So be aware of your thoughts, especially when approaching a challenging situation. So we haven't even talked about a good situation. That stuff's usually pretty easy. You're already automatically kind of doing it. But when you're having a challenging situation, this is when it really comes into play. I will give you an example for me. So the reason I'm making this video today is, uh, today I I go into work in a couple hours or whatever, and we had this wine class on Piedmont last week. And um, I honestly don't really care. Only reason I'm learning fine wine to this level is because it's a part of my job and I'm a professional and I have a high level of integrity. So if I'm gonna sell someone a four or $500 bottle of wine, I do wanna know about it. And in order to sell it, I need to know about it. So I'm studying it. But I really don't wanna study. I really didn't wanna do it today. I was like, God, I don't wanna do this. I don't even care about wine, man. I don't even really drink. I don't like wanna do any of this stuff. And I caught myself in my thinking, and as I came in to do my studying and then writing, making this video, right, do my little routine, I was like, no, Pierre, sit down, let's talk about this. And I wrote it out, but you could just sit there and think too, and I was like, look, dude, you know what this is about. This is a skill set. This is a body of knowledge and free education from a high-level sommelier. This is a great 
opportunity and gift you've been given and it's supporting you being better at your dreams because the better I am at my job, the more money that I make, the more money that I make, the more I can support the things outside of here that are part of my vision that are slowly coming to fruition. So look, dude, go in here and be a professional and make this happen and get it done and study and do it to the best of your knowledge and really internalize and learn this material because it will have a positive impact on your life. And even then, my whole attitude shifted about studying and I didn't go in going like, oh God, I gotta do this. I wanna be like, yeah, man, let's get down to business. This is interesting. This is, there's a lot to learn here. You never know when you might have a conversation about uh, Barolo from uh, you know uh, Giuseppe Rinaldi and him being a traditional uh, you know winemaker in the region, his staunch traditionalness and his um, Trey Tine 2015 is from three different regions: Rivera, Bonate, Canubi, San Lorenzo. Random, right? You don't even, you might not even know what I'm talking about, or you might. But who knows when I'll have a conversation with someone and be like, oh yeah, you know, blah, 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 some random person. And all of a sudden it's a wealthy person and they're into fine wine and they go, oh, you really know your stuff. And I'm like, not really. I just worked at this nice like restaurant and I learned a little bit about wine. I'm honestly not even into it. And he goes, well, look, he's like, you know enough about it. And it's kind of cool talking to you. You're a cool guy. I'm actually a wine collector. You should come over and just hang out. And then next thing you know, I go and have a bottle of wine with this wealthy guy who's influential and we just seem to click because I knew something that I learned that I didn't want to but I decided to and then all of a sudden there's all these opportunities he goes what do you do like what are your dreams what do you want to do and he goes oh I know so and so I should help you with that blah 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 you never know how this stuff's gonna happen and it all comes from shifting your mindset shifting your vibration creating a positive attitude and energy around the situation because when you create that positive attitude and energy around every situation you go into well, this is the law of attraction. Now you're you're attracting positive people, situations, and circumstances that mirror the energy that you are going out. So how aware of you are your thoughts and your state of being? How are you, just like swinging a golf club or shoot, learning a langu uh, different language or shooting a basketball, practiced at doing this? I used to not be like this, but now this is an empowering way to be, man. Any challenge, I'm like, yeah, this sucks. Oh my God, this is the situation. It is what it is. Can I do anything about it now? No. So what can I do? What am I gonna do? I focus on the solutions and not the problems. It took me a while to shift into this, but now that I'm here, we here, baby. And we going and nothing's stopping us. So you can do it, but it's just like shooting a basketball, swinging a golf club, learning a second language, learning how to crochet, you get better at time. It comes with practice. A tool that I will share with you, and I've shared this and we'll go deeper into this again, is about meditation. Meditation is not you learning to control your thoughts. It's you learning to be the in the eye of the tornado, in the calm of the storm, your storm being the mind and the thoughts that you have, and you being able to be centered and observe your thoughts. And when you're able to be centered and calm in the storm of your own mind and your own thoughts, now you can become aware of them. When you become aware of them, you can go, oh, dang, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, let's switch that. What would be a better thought that would shift my energy towards a positive outcome? Nah, this is stupid. I don't want to do it. I hate this work. This job sucks. No, I have a great opportunity. I'm learning like a really high level of educational wine material from a very uh, reputable, intelligent, you know, future, high, very high level psalm. It's a great opportunity to be one, enhance my job and my pocketbook in the immediate, but also possibly open up opportunities in the future. And I only did that because by meditation, by being centered, by being calm, I'm aware of my thoughts. And when I'm aware of my thoughts, now I can change them. When I can change my thoughts by choosing different ones, my energy changes, my vibration changes, my state of being changes. And that state of being, you don't attract what you want, you attract who you are, is now attracting who I am, which is someone who is thinking differently than most other people. This is you, this is you, or it's going to be you because you're gonna start doing this. Meditate, be present, ground your energy. So meditate, hope you come aware of your thoughts. This is about preparing mentally. So set your intention once you are like, okay, I'm freaking out, I don't feel good. Well, set your intention for what you would like the situation to become or, or the outcome to be. Prepare yourself mentally and emotionally, you shift your energy. That's what we're doing here, guys, your energy shifters. It's good stuff. Quote I'll leave with you today. One important key to success is self-confidence. An important key to self-confidence is preparation. Arthur Ashe. The preparation is the mental preparation, but to take it a step further, the mental preparation will help you prepare better physically 
to be in the moment and present with yourself, with your state of being. And as you, again, as we've given so many examples, imagine going into that date feeling relaxed and confident, unattached to the outcome if she likes you or not, or if he's going to want to go on a second date with you. Imagine going into a job interview or asking for a raise confident and relaxed, knowing what you deserve and being in a relaxed state, not in a pushy way or aggressive or passive aggressive. And you just clear, you're like, hey, I've worked really hard for the past couple of years. You know, I know we spoke six months ago about a raise. Uh, you know, do you have a couple of minutes so we can discuss this? Be like, yeah, you know, I've really, um, you know, I take really enjoy working here. Obviously, I really take pride in what I do. I, hopefully my performance is showing that. What do you think about it? What are your thoughts on this? And just by having an open discussion, by being in a confident state of worthiness and deserving, know that you've working, know that you knowing that you've worked for it. That raise is yours, girl, dude. That money's yours. That job is yours. That's what this is about. So shift your energy by shifting your thoughts. Become aware of your thoughts. Take a second in silence if by yourself or even with people. Again, you'll just get good at doing it mentally and be like, okay. Every time when I've been moving uh, this whole time, they're in this transition this whole year, and I've been like, oh, God, I'm so stressed out. You're like, dude, you are stressed out, yes, and it's okay to feel that. However, this is all of your making. This is the difficult transition you knew you were going to go through that you prepared for. This is the gateway to your new life. You have what it takes, and yes, you're uncomfortable. That's part of the process. So just keep rolling, bro. You got this. Like, Just keep going. Relax. It's cool. Trust in the divine. Trust in the universe. Lean into your spirituality. Lean into yourself. Have some belief in yourself. You know you're going to do this. It's going to turn out just as good or even better than you imagined. That's what I do to myself all the time. Today I'll go into work. I always set my intention. My intention is to have a smooth, air-free shift and to create a great experience for all the people that I interact with, uh, either guests or my coworkers, and to create cohesion and a positive team atmosphere and work environment. And I go in there with that intention, with that mindset, with that energy. And then I let it go and just focus on being present and I just let it happen. That's how this stuff goes. So shift your energy by shifting your thoughts. But if you're not aware of your thoughts or you're super anxious or overwhelmed, first meditate, go outside, ground, clear your energy, take a salt bath. You got to clear your energy. You got to calm yourself down. You got to relax your central nervous system. Breathe. We're going to do videos on breath work and about how important breath and breathing is. You never pay attention to your breathing. Do you breathe deeply, relaxed, slowly? Or do you have shallow breaths holding on because you're so anxious and overwhelmed? You're so disassociated from your body. You have no idea that you sit like this all the time. You breathe. (laughs) Breathing like this all the time. You're not even aware of it. Or do you go. Oh, whew feel good feel chill on a good one so we'll talk about it state of being shift your mind we'll get into breath work we'll get into meditation deeper i'm right around the corner from my new apartment guys i can't wait and i had to ground myself on that too i'm sitting here spending some serious time because i'm gonna really decorate and like swag this out make it this crazy chill place and yeah and i'm sitting here and i was getting ahead of myself and i was like bro just relax. You have no idea what the space is going to be like. Once the stuff you have is going to be in there. Once you get in there, we'll build it one piece at a time, one section at a time. Relax. So you got to check yourself. That's what this is about. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. That's what I got for you today, guys. Love you so much. And I'll see you soon. Peace.